Well, hello, this is Aaron, and today I'm going to do a short video discussing this. What is this? These are, um, this is wine. I'm making wine um, out of fruit juices. All right, like a cranberry or an apple juice, something like that. And uh, so what I'm going to do today is go over the uh, first step which brings you to this point of making wine from um, just fruit juices that I buy. I buy them on sale and get the cheapest price I can get. And um, then I bring them over here. And what I'm going to do today is do a video on how I get to this point and what the end result should look like or will look like. Okay. So what we have here are two one gallon jars and uh, we have a stopper and an airlock here airlock and stopper if you notice you might see this bubble up here this has been in there for exactly one month i made this a month ago today on the 8th of february today's on march 8th 2024 and uh, well let me talk about what i have here i have uh, both cranberry and apple juice here in this one so the same thing i took half a gallon of apple juice and half a gallon of cranberry and I mixed them. I have never tasted this. I don't know how it's going to taste but I have done this. I have done just apple juice and it's really good. This whole process probably takes well it takes more than a month to get to the it takes one month to get to this point but the longer that you're uh, patient and you're allowing this to wait the clearer this will be. There's, there's sediment down here on the bottom from the process. I'm going to talk about the process here in a second. But this will eventually be, as opposed to opaque, it's going to be clear. Just as clear as can be. You'll be able to see right through it like, like a glass of white wine or something like that. This one, I'm not sure about. We're going to find out. But this one, certainly, it'll be a, kind of a yellowish, clear liquid when we get done. So, to get to this point, it's a month and we're still cooking. I call it cooking, or we're still in the process of creating the wine. I'm going to stop that process for these two today after one month, and I'm going to go in another video. There, you saw this one jump. You saw that one jump. There, and that one jumped. So they're still going, but I'm going to stop them. It's been a month. I have done this process in two weeks, um, so now I'm experimenting and trying a month. So, and that is the next the next step. This first step I'm going to talk about today is getting it to this point here. All right. So this is phase one. Let me show you what you need to get to this point. Let me get these guys out of the way, and I'll show you the uh, the instruments and the ingredients that you need. All right. I'm back. And here's here's what we need for each. One gallon that we're going to make. We need one gallon of juice. This is half a gallon and half a gallon. So that'll be one gallon. And then you can also get it like at Costco. You can get apple juice in a whole gallon right here. All right. So what you need is a gallon of juice and not just any juice. You want this juice to be nothing but juice. Nothing but juice. Let me see if I can get this to focus. Yeah, I don't know if I'm going to be able to get it to focus or not. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Not going to get it to focus. There it goes. A little bit. All right. Well, I'm sorry. I can't get it to focus. But what you've got in here is, um, is only juice and sacorbic acid and that's it and I can't find here we go A ingredients apple juice all right apple juice you might see um, sacorbic acid that's just vitamin C and that's okay it keeps it that's, that's the preservative boy I sure can't get that to focus sorry about that ingredients water cranberry juice concentrate 
uh, a little bit of pectin, ascorbic acid, okay, vitamin C, and that's it, okay, so you don't want anything else, you don't want any other, I don't know, even know what else is in there, but I always check the label to make sure it's only juice, ascorbic, uh, ascorbic acid, and whatever water whatever's in there else so just juice okay anyway that's what you need you need one gallon of juice then you're going to need some yeast and what i've got here are two different flavors of yeast i've always used this red star in the red package this is uh, five grams one package they come in a package of eight to twelve or something like that for like eight dollars on amazon this is a different one. I think this is more for champagnes, but I'm going to try it. Experiment a little bit. It's also five grams. But you need one package per gallon. Okay. So you got juice, one gallon. You got the um, you got the yeast, one for one gallon. Then you need two cups of sugar for each one. Let's see if I can open this up. Two cups of sugar. And I got about four cups of sugar in there. So I'll measure that out. I need two cups of sugar. So gallon of juice, one package of yeast, two cups of sugar. Then you need some type of a jar or something, gallon size. All right. I like these because they're made for home brewing. I get them on Amazon for about $10 a jar, and they come with an airlock, which I'll talk about in a second. Um, they're kind of nice. You need to have an extra one laying around for the second phase, which is, will be in the, uh, in the next video I, I talk about. You need somewhere to move your product to in the second phase as, as we're clearing it out, or we're making the uh, product clear. You also need something to sanitize everything with. And I use this, Star Sand. It's a, a highly concentrated citric acid, basically. Okay? So, um, phosphoric acid and something other kind of acid that I can't pronunciate. It's, uh, I've, I pour it in the sink with some warm water. I put a little bit in there, maybe half of this or something like that makes of bubbles and uh, I put my bare hands in it and it doesn't hurt me so but I do sanitize it everything has to be sanitized you don't want this to be dirty you don't want anything growing in here because what we're gonna do is we're gonna we're going to we're gonna have active yeast in here so it'll be alive and um, for a long time you don't want anything else growing in there along with the yeast you only want the yeast to be growing and having a good time in there. And then you need airlocks. Now, when I buy these, when I buy these on Amazon, uh, I try to get them with the airlocks included in the deal. So this is an airlock, and I'll show you a little later how, how this works. But basically what it does is it goes on top, as you saw in the other ones, and it allows the carbon, carbon monoxide to escape out the airlock without anything getting back into the product all right so I get them with the airlocks I'm trying to keep that thing clean I just washed it and a couple of caps you need this for phase two and I'll show you that in my next video but they come with two caps or they come with a cap and an airlock for each bottle so there you go um, and that's all you need to get this going now let's talk about what we're going to do. All right, what we're going to do is we're going to put almost a gallon of juice in here. Okay, whatever flavor of juice you want. I fill it up to about here. Then I put two cups of sugar in the bottle and I shake it really well. Okay, I want the sugar to dissolve as best I can the, the juice is at a room temperature. I'm not heating it up or anything, but I will take the time to, after I put the sugar in, 
to shake it, but I don't fill it all the way up because I need I need some room inside for it to agitate. Okay, so uh, I'll show you that some pictures of that here in a, in a moment. But uh, what we're doing is uh, putting the sugar in. Then I will put the yeast in, one package of yeast, pour it all in there. Then I'll pour the juice, almost the rest of the juice, not all of the juice, because you'll fill this thing up and it'll overflow in the process. Because this is, this is going to bubble up a little bit inside there, especially in the first week or so. It's going to bubble up, it's going to foam up, and you don't want the foam to be coming out. So I probably have maybe a cup or less than a cup left uh, that I don't use the juice. So honestly, this is a little less than a gallon of product because I don't want to fill it all the way up. And I'll show you that as we go along. What we're doing here, let me go back to the other, uh, let me bring in one of the other bottles and I'll show you what we're doing. Okay. What we're doing is we're adding the yeast, the sugar, and the juice, and the yeast is alive, okay? And it's going to feed on the sugars, either the natural sugars that happen to be in the juice, and certainly the sugar that we put in there. That yeast is going to feed on the sugars. And as it does, it's going to do two things simultaneously. It's going to create carbon monoxide, which is going to escape out of our, out of our lock, our airlock, and it's going to create alcohol. All right. So the alcohol will remain in the juice. The carbon monoxide will escape, and that's why this is bubbling because the carbon monoxide is escaping. There you go. Just saw it. Um, in the first few days, this is going crazy. You know, okay, because there's a lot of carbon monoxide escaping in this process. So simultaneously, carbon monoxide is being created as a byproduct of this fermentation process and the alcohol is left behind in the process. That's very simple about what we're doing. So let me show you some pictures as I go through this. I'm going to make two batches. I'm going to make an apple cranberry and an apple just like I showed you originally and then I'm going to mark it and we'll talk about the airlocks uh, as we go as we get to that point. All right but let me show you let me show you in a series of pictures uh, as I go through this. I forgot to mention. Big oversized funnel. Very, very helpful. All right. So you can see the sugar on the bottom. This is about how much juice I put in it. Now we're going to shake it up. This takes uh, several minutes. I've got the cap on this. I'm holding my thumb over the cap. I'm going to shake that up really well. And I'm going to dissolve as much of that sugar as I can in there. In the, uh, so you got the cap on there. Just hold that on. You don't want this all over the kitchen. But uh, I'm gonna shake it up. I'm gonna shake it for at least another minute. Alright, I could keep shaking it. There's still more, I can still see some floating around in there. But uh, this is about the level you want. Two cups of sugar dissolving in the juice. Next is the yeast. So the yeast is inside, it's just sitting there, and you can uh, see it's kind of bubbling. I think it's more about the juice bubbles. Now I'm going to pour, um, not the remainder, but most of the remainder of the um, apple juice I haven't poured in here yet, and I'm going to bring it up to about right there. Right about there. Doesn't that look pretty? That's the yeast running around in there, they're happy. Okay, so this is, um, for our reference, this is the one gallon jug, and that's about how much I have left. I'll just drink that. But here's, uh, here's the headspace. Oh, I might put a little bit more in there, but not much more. This is the headspace I need right here. Because it's going to, 
you'll see in the next few days this is gonna get a little foamy in there and then it'll die back down but that's about what it should be looking like right there so I forgot to mention after I put the yeast in I'm not shaking this like I did when I had the sugar in there I put the yeast in and then I poured more juice on top and that process got most of the yeast there's a little bit in there but it, that got that yeast all mixed up in there I'm not going to shake it violently I'm just going to let it do its thing here all right so now let's talk about the airlock airlock is pretty simple there's a line right here and what I'm going to do is take this cap off and I'm going to put some water in here now I've, I've heard people putting rum or vodka or something like that in there I don't know I don't know why but they do I just put water and I fill it up just before the line I will put this on there very tight and then I'll put the, the lid and the water and everything will be together okay and I'll put this stopper down in there as tight as I can get it and uh, there we go let's focus focus and um, and you'll see that it's just gonna bubble now this is a new stopper for me and a new airlock I don't know if it's gonna be as active or as as doesn't have as many moving parts as the other ones I've used so I'm experimenting with this also but the principle is the same as I said um, carbon monoxide carbon monoxide will escape but nothing else will get in that's the idea and then I'll mark it up I'll put the date I'll also note that I put this new yeast that I'm experimenting with so I'll be able to taste the difference between the one I made before and this one see if there's a difference I'm not anticipating one but the other batch I made with Apple a month ago used the, the red red star and this is what I've always used this is the first time I'm using the green one and I'm sure there's a difference somebody will know but to me I don't think there's gonna be much of a difference so I'll get this airlock set up and, and show you a picture of that. This is kind of an interesting view. This is, uh, this is the one I made a month ago. And this is the one we just made. You can see how much more opaque that is. Anyway, so this is the one we just made here. And... Uh, what I'm going to do, airlock is in place. Everything's tightened down really well. I've dated it. And um, I also have to make a note that I put that that other yeast in it. I'll, I'll, write, I'll write something up in the corner here. Um, what I'm going to do with this is I put it underneath my desk. I wrap it in a towel. I don't want the sun from the window coming in. But you could put this really just anywhere um, you don't want it in the Sun you don't want the sunlight beating down on this but put it in the in the back of a closet or something like that and forget about it until about a month later okay at least two weeks because you want that you want enough of that that fermentation process creating alcohol but um, a month I found a month is good so I'm gonna do that and um, just kind of keep it out of the sun and I check on it every once in a while I might and I have um, about halfway through I'll pick it up and kind of stir it a little bit like this I won't shake it I'll just kind of stir it and then the the uh, the airlock will kind of go go crazy for a day or half of a day or so and it'll die back down but I, I found that shaking it or not shaking it stirring it a bit kind of kind of gets it going a little bit more I do that once or twice during a month and then that's it now my next video immediately following this one will be the this is the first step second step we're gonna start to filter this out we're gonna get this sediment out of here and it's gonna be crystal clear when I get done all right but the next step is in the next video about how I start that process I end this process and start the next process in the next video so you have to watch the next video to see how I do it. All right, so that's how we make 
juice wine. And um, that's how I do it. Works out pretty good. And uh, thank you very much. Bye-bye.